Did I get a half? Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jess Herbst. I am here with Alexander Gray, the star of our film today, and the director, Lisa Donato. Uh, welcome, thank you both for joining me today, taking some time out of your busy schedules. Um, this is the fifth Women's Texas Film Festival. Um, I've been to a few of these, they are fantastic. We are discussing the film um, Gosper Folds today. Um, so we've got some questions. Uh, I want to start off with just letting our two guests introduce themselves briefly. Alexandra, you're the star. We'll let you go first. Okay. Um, well, I'm Alexandra Gray. I'm an actress and I play Gossamer in Gossamer Folds. <laughs> and Lisa? And I am Lisa Donato. I am the director of Gossamer Folds. Uh, and I am in Austin, Texas right now, social distancing. Well, I'm in New Hope, Texas. Alexandra, where are I'm you? In, oh, I'm in, uh, I was about to say Chicago, where I'm from. I'm in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So we're hitting off them all over the place. Um, wonderful. So um, Lisa, tell us a little bit about the journey in creation, creating this film and how did you get involved with it? Uh, yeah, so I, um, I was approached by the producing team, which is Paperclip, and Millhouse Productions. And they were, uh, so Yardley Smith is kind of, she's the executive producer. She's also the voice of Lisa Simpson, which everybody knows her as. She's an incredible uh, ally for the LGBTQ community and really wanted to put her money where her mission is, which is to be a wonderful ally. Um, and she was looking for movie scripts to make that made a difference and kind of had a triumph story behind it. She found this script and then she wanted to hire a queer director. And so I had come recommended um, by some people and she watched some of my short films and some of them that have screened at the Women Texas Film Festival and just thought I was a good fit. And then they interviewed me and, and it was love at first sight. And I knew, I knew like halfway through reading the script that I wanted to direct this. I was, it was a no brainer for me, so. So Alexandra, you're wonderful um, in, in this film, just, just fantastic. Um, you bring a lot of balance, um, patience to the character. Um, Lisa, just what was, the, what was it like working with Alexandra, creating this character with her? How, how, did that, you know, how did that come about? How did you influence her to do such a wonderful job? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I, I mean, Alexandra and I, you know, we didn't meet before making this movie, but we were friends immediately. We have great chemistry and relationship. And so I think that helped a lot, um, I hope. Well, uh, I mean, I can say, too, with a little bit of echo, um, I can say that there were moments, is, uh, specifically when we were filming that car scene, what was your thing you used to always say to me? Used to be like, Oh, she would just throw in my trash life that I had before I became famous, I guess. She'd just be like, take me back to when you got disowned and, you know, when, you know, you were homeless. What was that like? You know, I mean, she just like, you know, and I love that because I'm very, I'm very hands on, you know. And so um, that was one of our methods that when we were doing those, those really tough scenes. Um, and there's so many variables and things going on, you know, the exhaust from the car, you know, and all of these different things, um, you know, that was just something that she would do to motivate me, which I think we found kind of early on was like, it, it allowed me to get to where I needed to go by just hearing that my life was a piece of shit before now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean that in the most beautiful way, like, like that was our process. And, and, and so I think that's why. Yeah. And I, I would say that um, Alexandra's character, like it really resonated for her personally. And so to talk about, you know, who Alexandra was before she left Chicago and her process of being in a place that she wanted to leave and start over. And that was very much paralleled 
uh, Gossamer's life, you know, I'm trying to get out of this small town. So it was, yeah, I loved our method. <laughs> well, speaking of small towns, I'm from a very small town in East Texas, and now I live in an even smaller town in North Texas. Um, and I can guess by looking at you, y'all are both way younger than I am. So none of y'all experienced small towns uh, that I can think of in the 1980s. Alexander, what did you do to get yourself in that mood? Because you prayed, you portrayed yourself perfectly for an 80s girl. How did you, how did you get that, that feeling? Yeah, well, I wasn't born in the 80s, so I, you know, I have no clue. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I think that for me, I, I tried to do a lot of work beforehand. Uh, Lisa provided um, a playlist uh, of songs that um, I was able to listen to. And she also sent me a breakdown of everything. So I was able to really go in and say, who is this character? What year was she born? And, and really just kind of dissect all of those different things. But for me, um, right before I left to come to Los Angeles to uh, be an actress, I was living in a small town in uh, Illinois. Um, you know, Illinois has some farms areas as well where there's tornadoes and stuff. And so I was living in a place in a mobile home, uh, like in a farm area. So there were, I saw no trans people, LGBT people like me, unless I went hours into the city. But um, so for me, it took me back to that moment right before I made that decision to leave, because I think um, when you feel so trapped and you feel like you have nothing to lose, it's just like, it's time to go. And so I, I went right back to that moment before I got there. And then I always try to tie in the journey of like, where have I come from? And that's why I really loved our method of, of, of directing, because uh, for me, all I have to do is think about one thing. And, you know, if I'm doing an emotional scene, I have to think about one moment in my life because I've had many. <laughs> and then it's like, it'll just, it'll just take me right back to that moment. So I think there was a lot of that. Speaking of emotional moments, you and um, Robert Jackson, excuse me, Jackson Robert Scott um, Tate in the film, you guys just had such a, an on-screen connection. Um, was there, I mean, did, did y'all develop a real friendship? Did that play into the game? Lisa, did you have a hand in this? Was there a nudge? I mean, this is a, how old was he in this? Uh, seven, eight years old, maybe 10? I don't know. I'm no good with little, with young actors, but your, your relationship with him was so sincere and there was such chemistry between the two of you. Y'all want to talk about how it was working with this, this actor? Yeah, well, I'm sure Lisa has her experience working from a director's standpoint. Um, but for me, it was it was really, really, it was different, but it was like so exciting. I think he's just so much older than he already is in so many aspects. He's still, you know, a young a young child. So um, he kept me very, very upbeat and very fun. Maybe days that might've been harder, you know, to just see him always happy and eating bacon. It was just like, okay, this is, you know, I always have my spirits high, but to work with him, I think beforehand, we didn't have much time, but in the hotel, there was like a restaurant, and so we would go down and read lines with each other and with his mom, and um, so we, I think from the first day that we met um, in Louisiana, I think that we just had like this chemistry of just like, we're going to be best friends, you know, um, and so it, I think it was, it was a lot of fun for me. Yeah. I think Please. just making sure that you two spent a lot of time together outside of shooting as much as you could important. Um, and Jackson's 10, by the way, and he was 10 when he shot the movie as well. Uh, and then you also, you went to New Orleans together and had like that amazing day and connected. And I feel like that really helped your relationship on set too. It's not in my questions, but could you skateboard before this movie or was that something you learned? Did you just hop on that thing and knew how to ride it? Um, I don't, <laughs> listen, I don't do sports. I don't do skateboards and things. So when I saw that, I was like, what type of Disney Channel mess is this? Um, but, <laughs> you know, it was, it was different. So I was super excited to, to try it. And so we did, I worked with a, a private coach before I left uh, to do the shoot. And, um, and there was only small parts that I needed to skateboard. So it wasn't like I had to be, I'm playing a skater, you know, in this movie for the entire thing. So thank God, because I was horrible. But um, 
you know, we, we, we got some time to practice and that also bonded us as well because, I mean, he, he knew what he was doing. He was just having so much fun. But um, I did have to work with somebody to kind of get it. And I think in the end, we got, we got a little bit of something. Oh, you, you certainly look like a professional. Uh, before I go on, I just want to invite anybody in the audience, if you have um, questions, um, you can add them and they will be passed on. I'm going to be happy to ask them. Um, so, Lisa, um, you've worked with a lot of actors. Um, can you single, um, single out a scene or two that really stands out for you um, at working with this film? What, 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 what were the moments in this film that really did it for you? Um, the moment that Gossamer breaks down in her bedroom with Jimbo first, always, it, it was, oh, she just nails that performance. I mean, I think there was after a couple of takes, after one take in particular, probably the one we used in the movie, there was just dead silence after she got done and we had already rolled cut and me and, and the crew were just looking around at each other and the guy who plays Jimbo, Ethan Suppley, who's incredible too, um, he had tears in his eyes and he just mouthed to me, that was fantastic. And <laughs> it was just so, it was electrifying when that happens, you know, she just dropped into that and and went there. Um, and it's so authentic and, and just, it's just such a great scene. It, I, it gets me every single time I watch it. Um, and I just like, I mean, every scene, uh, you know, there, she brings, I like what, how you described it is that she brings a lot of patience to the character. Mm. Um, and I think I was bumping up against like, well, who is this character supposed to be? And then we kind of just dropped into this character of Gossamer. And I just love, I love how, yeah, patience is, is such a great word for it. Of, of just like, she's just a small town girl with big city dreams and and we didn't have to like, you know, do anything like overly dramatic or anything to to sell that. It was just so, so it's such a sincere performance. And, and Alexandra, what about you? What was your moment? Yeah, I think that I really connected with that scene too. Um, that was the scene that was in the audition and um, and I t I've been telling this story to, to every panel we do, but this time I won't cry because I've cried all week, so I'm, I'm good. Um, but, you know, I always say when I got this audition, I was at such a dark place in my career and in my life that um, reading this scene in particular, I was like, oh, my God, I knew that I had to tell this story. And there was there was a moment there where I wasn't going to do the audition after a few days, something had happened. I broke up with my ex and my friend, I kind of was auditioning and I think she's way more talented than me and I love her. And so I was like, girl, I'm not doing it. And and I wasn't, and I was just like crazy, all these crazy thoughts that go through your head. Like, I'm not good enough. There's no way I'm gonna get yes on this. And uh, just so happened that the day that I did the audition, um, I was housekeeping because I was a housekeeper <laughs> before this movie. <laughs> and, um, I was cleaning toilets that next day and I'm sitting there on the floor cleaning some, some, some rich person's house. And I'm just like, you have to do this audition. And in that moment of having that thought, I got a text from my cell tape guy who said, Hey, I can squeeze you in today in the next hour. And I was like, okay, the bells are ringing. And so I did the tape. I literally did the entire, it was 10 pages. I did it all in one take um, during my cell tape and I really had felt when I finished that last scene, which is the one Lisa was talking about, I really felt like, oh my gosh, I was like, I felt that, you know, I mean, you won't always want to turn in good work, but I felt like that. I think I even posted a clip without sound on my Insta story. And I was like, I got my juice back tonight. I said, this was the freaking audition that I needed to make me believe in myself again and say that I'm in this for the long run and I'm gonna keep going. And two days later, I mean, I got the call, so. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you did, did fantastic. Um, we've got a question from the audience. Um, this is for both of you. What are some of the memorable feedback you've gotten on the film? Um, hmm, memorable feedback. Well, we're like in our first week of screening this, uh, everybody, you know, raves about Alexandra's performance. Um, 
<laughs> my brother-in-law said it's like gut punch after gut punch <laughs> of emotions. <laughs> and that was pretty memorable. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I hope it's a good thing. It, it doesn't ask what's good and memorable. It just says what memorable feedback. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna oh, put okay. this on the poster. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's been really positive. It's I I'm I'm so happy with the feedback so far. I think it's, you know, I my greatest hope for this film is that there's people in you know New Hope, Texas, or pla these places in wherever in the world that live in these rural communities that don't know if they know a trans person, and they have a conversation about what it means to be trans for the very first time. That is what I really want to be happening. And even while making this movie, you know, when we were doing um, playbacks and, and, and working on sound, I mean, crew people would come in and stop and watch and they would stay afterwards and want to have a conversation about this movie. And that's when I knew that this film was going to be important because of that. Any moments for you, Alexandra? Um, what was the question? I'm so sorry. I was listening. I would got lost in Lisa's answer. I was just listening. <laughs> okay. What are some memorable? What is? What are some memorable feedback you've gotten on the film? Feedback from people that that about the film that that means something to you. Oh well, yeah. I, I guess like Lisa said, it's just in the first week, so I haven't. I mean, I've gotten tagged in a few things, but um, you know that were people were really nice to say that I gave a good performance. I think as an artist and as one of the leads of the film, I was really nervous. This was my first lead role in a, in a feature um, or any film for that matter at the time. And so I was very nervous. I think we, I think I struggled a little bit in the beginning um, with some of the other scenes because I'd never done a role like this and um, where I was kind of normal, <laughs> you know, where I wasn't playing necessarily the victim and I wasn't, you know, j just whatever, but so I struggled a little bit. So I was nervous, you know, and I, you know, you're always nervous as an artist about what people think. And so to hear so far that people really like my performance. And so that makes me very happy. I'm going to give you a little feedback here. As a trans woman, I have to tell you that there's a particular scene, we talked about this a little bit earlier, Lisa, that to, to me, I think is so meaningful. And that is the conversation, and I'm sorry for not remembering the, the character's name, but the woman who brought the tuna casserole was interacting with your father and he kept misgendering you. And she just politely, sweetly stayed right on target. She didn't get angry. She didn't call him down. And personally, I want to see more things like that because it's an education for, for the for the world, for them to look at this and say, oh, there are other ways. I mean, you, you can treat a trans woman just like anyone else. So you don't have to put it in quotation marks. You don't have to, to go through any hoops. Just treat them like a normal human being. And I, I think this film did such a lovely job of that. So that's my, um, that's my feedback um, overall on this. Um, let's see. I don't have any more questions there. So let's go up here to... Um, yeah, can we talk about the ending a little bit? Um, could there have been another ending? Could we have had, you know, Gossamer Falls goes to New York or second? Could we have, could we, could we have done something without changing the ending? What do you think? Well, I, I really wanted to kind of bookend the film um, with a pickup shoot and I pitched the company. We didn't have any money for it, but Basically, it would be that we would end the film with Tate or maybe even start the film with Tate, you know, just kind of walking in New York City in present day and looking for Gossamer, like reconnecting. And then the movie starts like it's his summer in 86. And then we end the movie with him finding her at this incredible design shop where she's living her life. And they just share this look at the end and just this look of like, you know, knowing how they've impacted each other throughout their lives. And so I really wanted that. I wanted to see, I wanted to have a moment for Gossamer where the movie ends on her and she's winning and she is, she won so big, um, but we didn't have the budget to shoot that. And so we had to do what we could to make sure she still won in the end. Wonderful. Okay, we have another audience question, and, and I'm really interested to hear the answer to this. How did you get Shane West to play such a jerk? 
that was easy. No, actually, Shane is a class act. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. I loved working with him. Even when he wasn't shooting, he was on set watching all the scenes and bringing people coffee and food. And it was, he's such a nice guy. And I feel like sometimes nice, the nicest guys play the best villains. I don't know why, but that's been my experience in directing um, those types of characters. And he also plays villains a lot in his other stuff, you know, um, in Gotham and, and a lot of, he's, he's got, he has a lot of experience and he has a lot of acting chops. So I also think the film meant a lot to Shane. Um, he really loved like the message of it. And so he really worked hard to make sure that Billy was a jerk, but also he was a good father, like the best father that he knew how to be. And so he was trying to create an empathetic jerk. <laughs> I hope that uh, came through for him, but it was, it was really just natural. I mean, there were some times on set where he had to say, you know, those derogatory words over and over multiple angles and multiple takes. And, and it was exhausting. We had to take breaks in those moments. Okay, looking for more questions from the audience if you have them. Um, so, um, Alexandria, you had, you know, you had a very difficult job of portraying a, um, don't look at me like that. You had such a difficult <laughs> job of portraying yeah, a, um, like, a, a trans woman <laughs> in a small town um, where she obviously, you know, was fighting with being misgendered. How did you balance that with her humanity? How did you know, how did you bring up such, um, she had such a positive outlook on life and, and you know, it, it was, um, well, just the role you portrayed in her was such a positive one. Um, how did you do that? How did you show that she had such, such issues to deal with and still be emotionally positive and, and right there with everybody? That was, that had to be tough. Well, you know, for me, I think other than before I booked the movie, right, that dark period that I had, I'm generally a, very happy person um and and you know i've had so many different layers to my story you know i grew up in eight foster homes um you know i've 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 been a you know physically abused sexually abused all of these things i've been homeless before so you know my story just continues to just keep uh re, you know writing itself but um for me throughout all of that you know i've always been a positive person and so i think that i just I, I tried to bring myself to to her, and despite everything and all the adversity I think that I've been through, I've managed to still continue to live a life that that I'm that I'm happy with. And so I really just wanted to bring that. And something happened this week. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic, and I've lost three three friends to COVID nineteen, who all are under the age of forty, and. Um, you know, my my stepdad passed away from COVID-19 uh, last week, and um, him and I didn't have the best relationship. He, he was he was really horrible to me growing up, and he did things that, you know, that um, maybe I'll seek about one day in a memoir or something. But I, you know, my some of my family was saying, like, how do you feel? And, you know, it's like, well, I, I, I. I'm, I'm sorry, I, don't, I don't, didn't want anything bad to happen to him because I had forgiven him so long ago, right? You know, I had moved on with that. And I think it's so important that despite what we go through, despite what people say about us and, 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 and the way that people treat us is that, you know, forgiveness is never for, you know, the other person. It's just for yourself and you have to continue to be a positive person. So I just really tried to bring that part of that part that's inside of me to her character as well. So she'll get a little hot at times, you know, damn it. I just told you not to call me George, but you know, <laughs> for the most part, you know, for the most part, she, she's going to love hard. And I think that she always put everyone else's feelings before hers until she couldn't do it anymore. So, and that's why she made the decision to leave. Yeah. So we've got a couple more questions. One of them, um, people in the audience want to know, why are you both so awesome? Um, I'll let either one of y'all add to that if you'd like to. Why are we so awesome? That's the question. <laughs> why, why are you so awesome? I would say you just are. We're, we just are. That is it. 
Um, <laughs> somebody else would like to know how, uh, this gets technical, but how did you do the um, firefly game? That's piqued someone's interest. That was a pretty amazing shot. Um, you want to share your secrets? Uh, yeah, so we, the firefly gown. Yes, the gown with the firefly. Yeah, well, we originally wanted to actually build a wedding dress uh, with LED lights, but we couldn't get them, get lights that didn't flicker, right? And so we basically had to um, light the, the dress uh, practically on set, which is using mat boxes and, and kind of spot the dress as if these things are going to, you know, we're going to recreate these fireflies in VFX later. Um, and so that they would become source light on the dress. And then um, for that scene, Tate also looks at fireflies in his hand. So we rigged like a wire with an LED light in his hand so that when he looks at his hands, his face lights up. Um, but we did it all with just practical lights on. Then we we recreated the fireflies in with CGI special effects, which they turned out beautiful. I, I especially love the catching fireflies scene a lot. I think that turned out really nice. You know what I remember about that scene? <laughs> it, was the last, it was the last scene that I think we shot of the yeah. movie, or at least for me, that was my last scene. It was freaking freezing. It was raining, it was muddy, it was freezing. Storming. It was crazy that day. And, and we were shooting it at nighttime. And so, I mean, I was so damn happy. I was like, that's a wrap, we did it. But um, that scene wasn't as beautiful to shoot as it, as it looks on screen. <laughs> no, when we had tons of canopies and flags to protect us and all the equipment. And then Alexandra had to on this like saddle contraption that was under her dress and then she had to get pushed on this dolly track towards camera and then pulled away again <laughs> while trying to keep her from not getting drenched by the rain <laughs> what what you, that, threw, when you when you said that's what you remember the film i thought the, that shot i thought you were gonna say you were hot because lisa's describing all these lights and mats i think you're probably in there burning up but no you're nope. cold Storming. <laughs> um, speaking of storming, we are experiencing a storm here in New Hope. So if you see my lights are flipping because we keep losing power, but I have everything of my stuff on. Oh, so um, I have another question. Says Lisa, your mission statement with Sparkle Motion Films is to unearth the indomitable spirits of human, and that is a very clear in your work. How is how has that evolved over the last few years in America's roller coaster? Um, and in the last few years, that's from the Department of Redundancy Department, but how has it evolved over the last few years? Um, hmm, wow, that's a very thoughtful question. Thank you, whoever asked that. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's the same mission. It's, it's, it's more important than ever to unearth the indomitable spirit of humans. I think we are faced with even more challenges, more overt, overt challenges than ever before. Um, I think 2020 has been <laughs> one of the most challenging times of my personal life. And I think we need to show triumph stories now more than ever um, without being too sentimental and, and while being authentic and real and show how we survive tragedy, you know, and, and how, and maybe not survive it, but endure it and find connection in that with each other. I mean, that's that's what I look for in reading scripts when I choose to direct something. It's, I love, you know, I, I feel like I, I, a writing teacher told me that adversity drives, reveals character. Like, who are you in the face of adversity? And that's a question I'm always asking in all of my characters, you know, and I'm specifically interested in how people rise above and 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 survive and thrive through adversity. So, I think it's hasn't really evolved. It's been the same mission. It just is more important now, more than ever. So this question comes from me, Alexandra. As I grew up um, as a trans person, I know that representation trans people that I saw in the films. And one of my favorite lines is as a kid, which was in the 1960s, the only trans person I ever saw was Norman Bates. And then he got replaced with a guy in Science of Lambs making the uh, girl suit. So my experience was trans people were always killers, um, 
rapist, horse, something. Here you are starring, I mean, headlining in a movie, doing such a wonderful job. We've seen a slow progression of trans actors making a name for themselves. How, how is the industry responding? Do you see a bright future? Is it, is it, has it gotten easier? Are you still facing the same type of, um, you know, rejections that, that trans people have seen in the past? Where, how is it for you? I mean, I'm really hoping to start seeing your name everywhere. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, you know, I really don't want fame. I think if anything, I just know that in this, in this business that, you know, if you have a name, the more work you can probably get, you know? So, um, unfortunately that's kind of how, how the game works, but also, um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely no have noticed, um, a shift. I think that, you know, things are getting better. We, we did a panel discussion yesterday where we were talking about representation. And I think there were like zero trans characters uh, in, in major motion pictures um, last year. And so, you know, I think that things are getting better. I think that we have a long way to go. I think I said something to the extent of, you know, I look at the careers of, of Regina King and I look at, you know, people like Hattie McDaniel actresses who worked and worked for years. And now we're finally starting to see Regina King really receive that recognition that she's worked so hard for and that her performance is really warrant. And um, so I just think of, of, I think of myself and other trans actors that we're pioneering, you know, we're, we're some of the first trans people to work on these sets and, and to work around producers and, and showrunners and people who maybe have never worked with trans people. And so um, we're pioneering. We're like Hattie McDaniel, where we're taking those punches and we're taking, taking roles that maybe, you know, aren't the best or ones that we would want just so that, you know, we can uh, help dismantle the entire system and, and hopefully carve out a way to say trans people are just as talented. Our stories are just as important. And yeah, so I'm hoping that people receive the film very well. I hope that it goes to the theaters. I hope that it grows millions of dollars. I hope we get nominated for an Oscar. I'd love to win the Spirit Award. I mean, I'm just saying, right? You got one can only dream, but you know, I only <laughs> say that because um you know, I just wanted to, I just, I want people to see the film. I think if someone like myself had a saw a movie like this, whether it was independent or whether it was major motion picture, you know, how much of a difference it could have made in my life. So I love that I got to tell this story because I always wanted to tell stories like this and I just want to keep telling more and more stories. Yeah. I, I want to say something about that too, about representation, you know, and I, and I think this is in the disclosure doc, I think, but this is why representation is so important is that, you know, 85% of, of Americans don't think they know a trans person. And so that means that all of their information and education of who trans people are, are in the media, right? So if, if what they're seeing in the media and what the stories are being media are, you know, trans people are victims or sex workers or like all these like outdated archaic uh, uh, stereotypes, then that's who they know who a trans person is, right? So that's why it is so important for Hollywood to keep getting better and better of creating these roles that normalize and, and show them in compassionate lens through compassionate lenses. And, um, and I also want the film to reach wide and far as possible. So that's going to roll into my next question, which is, and we've mentioned the pandemic, um, what kind of struggles are you facing trying to, to get distribution? As we discussed earlier, we're all virtual here. Um, the world is a completely different place than it was just six months ago. So um, what kind of challenges and how are you overcoming the challenges? How, how are we going to get this film out to the masses? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think as a filmmaker and as cast, it the biggest challenge is disappointment and not being able to be in person and and being able to go and travel to all these beautiful festivals and talk to people afterwards and, and have that connection in person. But I don't know, I kind of feel hopeful about the virtual space and I feel like that it could probably reach wider audiences. I mean, we are more available to be at more festivals and have these great conversations. Um, 
I feel like we have, we have a really great team on our side as ter in terms of marketing and, and people who really want to get this thing sold and distributed. So I feel very hopeful around that. I, I feel like, you know, hopefully early next year, we'll be able to see it in the theater together, holding hands, Alexandra. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's very uncertain. I think the challenge is the uncertainty of it all and not really knowing because we're all trying to figure it out together. It's a very fluid <laughs> um, industry right now. So it's just living in that uncertainty of it. Yeah, and I, I guess I would say that I hope that this pandemic that we're in, that it gives everyone a new perspective. I know I'm sure as hell not the same person I was when this, before this thing started. I mean, I wash my hands like crazy now, <laughs> but you know, um, I just hope that it's giving everyone a different perspective. And, and some of the roles that I've been auditioning for have been really, really awesome roles that I'm like, last year I would have been like, okay, you are not going to cast me in this. <laughs> Whereas now I'm, I have the attitude of, Hey, I could play anything, you know what I mean? And so I think that this pandemic is getting in, in, in the civil rights movement that just took place with Black Lives Matter. I think it's really forcing people to say, we have to do better, right? We need, we have to do our part. And if everyone does their part, and if the media and Hollywood does their part, you know, by uplifting queer voices and, and, and un underrepresented voices and, and people of color, then you know, that's only going to lead to more. You know, I love what I see Netflix doing and, and, and Amazon where they're giving the platform to Black stories, you know, and realizing that our, people want to see it, you know. And so I hope that this gives everyone a new out, out, outlook to say, you know what, a film like Gossamer Folds, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a mission deal. Let's put it in theaters. Hell, do, we will do a limited release. Whatever we have to do, let's take a chance on this film right? For the sake of the world is changing. Let's be the hero. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yay. <laughs> um, do we have any more questions for the audience? We're, we're getting close to wrapping up here. I think I've got um, about seven more minutes. So um, let, let's talk about some of the other actors in this. I mean, i got the link to this and I watched it a few days ago and it was just, it just amazed me. It's like, wow, I, this person, that person, you, you put together quite a, um, quite a recognizable cast, amazing actors and actors. How did you, um, how'd you put that cast together? Um, and, and how did you, um, how'd you get Alexandria? How did you find your star? Uh, well, our uh, production companies uh, found Alexandra first. I think they sent out, they worked with a, casting director, we have a fantastic casting director. His name is Russell Boast. And, um, you know, Alexandra was one of the first role, was the first role that we booked because that was the most important to us. And they were only looking at trans actresses um, and she nailed it. And when I came in, they were, we hadn't made the decision yet. They wanted me to see all the self tapes and it was, you know, unanimous that it was Alexandra. And then we basically worked with our casting director to just, you know, he would, um, yeah, just send us recommendations. We would just, all the producers would, would just have this ongoing email of who we wanted, like our top, you know, three people and for every role and every single uh, role was offer only. So we would make an offer and, you know, we were just thrilled when like Shane West and, and Sprague and uh, Ethan and Jen Richards, you know, everybody said yes. And, and it was, we were on, it was go time. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, well, I think at this point, unless I get some more, uh, audience questions, I'm going to just, let's turn it back over to Alexandria for any kind of closing words you'd like. Um, anything you want us to know? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just hope that, I don't know, I don't know who's watching or who, who will see. I just, um, I hope that people are just really inspired by the film and, and really touched and, and moved and all those things and only, and, and want to help tell more and more stories or get to know somebody like me, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lisa? Um, yeah, 
the same. I just, uh, please watch the film. Please talk about the film with your friends and share it with your friends. Uh, the only social media we have right now is on Instagram, but we are active on Instagram. So please follow us there. And soon we'll have a website and Facebook page and um, with more updates soon. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. It's been a pleasure. Um, Alexander, thank you for not only a wonderful performance as an actress, but um, for doing such wonderful representation. Um, you've done you've done us all very proud. Lisa, thank you for putting this together. I'm wishing you the most success. I really, I think maybe the first thing I want to see when I come out of um, this COVID is I'd love to go to a movie theater that opened and see this on the big screen and I will I grab know. every one of my friends with me. So Yay. thank you so much. This has been fantastic. And y'all all have a safe and, and lovely rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you.